What are you doing to make sure your family is taken care of during challenging times? Join with us and take the World War III Victory Garden Challenge. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen, and we are excited today because we have a really fun challenge for you. Um, we've been reading your comments and, and feeling the the anticipation and the the kind of stress that we're feeling as we look to the future and history is a great teacher and one of the things that stood out to us is that during world war one and two people and communities they they built victory gardens right they planted them and they that was how they were able to um, contribute and take care of themselves regardless of what happened with the supply shortages. Right, and don't get us wrong, we're not predicting World War III and we certainly hope that that doesn't ever happen. However, we have to be prepared for whatever may happen. In World War I and World War II, these individuals and families they grew gardens to help provide produce, but it also boosted morale. It was something that united them and brought them together. And each one of us can do the same. Now, regardless of your situation, you can do this. Whether it's some pots on your back patio or your balcony, a little grow bed in your backyard, whatever you can do, even growing some greens inside your home, every one of us can do something to have our own victory garden. And let's not forget the power of edible landscape. So it's so possible just to grow different plants right there in your existing landscape. So what about planting a grapevine over a beautiful arbor? You know, if you plant clematis along with that, they'll grow side by side and it is absolutely stunning. And yet then you have these grapes that you can eat and it didn't cost you any more money, right? You didn't have to go to the store and it just helps with that sustainability and, and food security. And now for you seasoned gardeners out there, what are you going to do, right? You could be such a blessing to this community as we plant our World War III um, Surri or Victory Gardens because you've got the knowledge, you've got the wisdom. Can you share seeds? Can you share starts? I think as we all work together, this could be amazing. And you can be a hero. We hope that you'll join us in our World War III Victory Garden Challenge. And we hope you'll send some photos and videos and tips. So send those to our contact page on theprovidentprepper.org or we'll leave a link in the description that you can send those to. And you don't know how you might help someone else be successful with their own victory garden. So one of the things that I really want to focus on is sustainability. Um, we noticed that there is a, a a fertilizer shortage, right? And mostly right now that's affecting commercial farmers, which affects our food production that we get at the stores. However, there is totally ways that you can produce your own food using compost and natural things. And so I'd love to hear about that too, because that's the way that I grow. Um, I use very few fertilizers because I like to do it organically, but um, I'd love to hear how you do it as we focus on this. We hope that you will join us in our World War III Victory Garden Challenge. Every one of us can play a part in this, and we hope that you'll send some photos and videos and any tips that you have for gardening, because sharing these may just be the inspiration or the help that somebody else needs to grow their own successful victory garden. We are so blessed to have this platform, right? And so by you sharing it, we're able to, to disseminate that information to so many people. So don't be shy. If you have a garden and you'd like to share some of the things that you learned, please, please, please make sure that you send it in to us. Now, um, one of the things I wanna focus on is sustainability. That doesn't mean that you cannot use fertilizers, right? You can totally garden any way that you want to. But for me personally, um, I use a lot of composting and some different methods so that I can grow more organically. And we're noticing that there's a shortage of commercial fertilizers right now. And that's mostly affecting the farmers. I don't know how it'll affect us later on, but by us growing our own gardens, we're taking the pressure off of some of those commercial farmers and making sure that those who can't do this have, have that food. So I am totally excited. So are you ready to be a hero? I think almost everybody could grow some kind of garden. And if perchance you can't, look around for some kind of a community garden that you can be a part of. Or perhaps there's maybe an older couple or somebody who could just use a little help in their garden that would love to share their, their talent, their knowledge, 
and make you a better gardener yourself. Because I can tell you that I have a much larger garden than I need to have to support the family that is living here at home now. And I would love for somebody to, that wanted to come and work with me and learn. I would love to have that extra pair of hands. So don't underestimate that. You know, just get a little bit creative. So now Jonathan and I talked about this and we decided, okay, what can we do to up our challenge? So what we're going to do is from July through September of this year, we're not going to purchase any produce. Now we decided that bartering is okay. Sure, that's um, okay. But we're just gonna live off of what it is that we can produce in our garden. And so we're really we're really excited about that. Yeah, um, that, a little that terrified. Is a little terrified, but that's our motivation <clears throat> to get busy right now. This is the time to get going, get busy right now and make sure that this garden works because it it's going to affect how well I eat. <laughs> it is. Now, it's funny because we actually did this challenge. Uh, well, not this challenge, but it was kind of similar. We went for 90 days without going to the store um, to produce or to purchase any kind of food. So we lived off of our food storage and what we could grow in our garden. Now, because our food storage right now, we don't know when we'll be able to replenish it. We're not going to do that with with this challenge we're just going to do the produce aspect of it but if you click the card in the corner it will take you to a playlist um, and you can see what we learned from all this it was incredible so we have a fair level of confidence that we're not going to starve to death at all right but it could be really interesting and the videos that we create from all this should be really fun and they'll be more fun if you contribute absolutely so Doing the math says this will be a 92-day challenge. <laughs> Join us. Of course you do the math. I am a crazy plant lady, so you guys know that. So this World War III Victory Garden Challenge is almost as good as chocolate to me. Like, like Not quite. So, Not quite, but Like, I'm close. so excited. Um, but this, we just came across this company a few weeks ago, and I am totally impressed. So these are survival garden seeds, and... Um, I was just so impressed because most of the time when I look at what somebody's marketing as survival seeds, it, they, they don't know what they're doing, right? Oh, I shouldn't say that. My apologies to any of you who have created those. But um, when it comes to really growing a garden, you've got to take into account, you know, sustainability. First of all, all the seeds should be heirloom or open pollinated so that you can take the seeds from that plant and grow a crop next year. So theoretically, if you were to buy the seed packet, you should never need to buy it again if you save all of the seeds, right? And they give you instructions on the back of the packet. Oh, it's so, so cool, it they is, totally do. They have really thought this out well. Yeah, so um, one of the other things is a variety, right? We need a huge variety because if you have a crop failure with one, then you have another one. Right, and that, and then you're trying to extend your season, and the larger variety of crops that you have, the more likely it is that you're going to have the nutrients that you need and be able, you know, the whole eating the rainbow thing. Yeah, so with a hundred different seed packets, that's a pretty big rainbow. One of the things that I really liked about um, how they designed this, I mean, seriously, these guys are gardeners. They they really know what they're doing. So. Each one of these seed packets has about enough seeds to provide for four people of whatever this crop is. But what they did is you look at the watermelon and I have four different varieties of watermelon. No any survival seed or companies that do that. And that's exactly what I want in my garden. I want diversity, right? Um, they have four different types of kits. So this one is mine, of course, because I'm the crazy farmer chick, um, but the farmer's seed vault. So I have a hundred packages of seeds. They have a homesteader variety, which has 50 packets of seeds. And these are all, when you, when you look at the kit, this is a hundred dollar kit, this is a $50 kit. So the seed packets turn out to be about a dollar a piece, which is super fantastic. Um, this is the home garden kit. And this one has 30 packets of different heirloom seeds. Now, I'm gonna show you what's in my kit, but remember that because of seed availability and different things like that, sometimes what exactly what's in the kit 
will change because certain varieties might not be available, but um, you'll always have, have a good variety of the basics. Now we talked about three of the products that you can get. This is my favorite. This is the one that got me excited. This is the apartment kit. And this to me was so cool because we've had so many people say, well, I live in a condo or I live in an apartment. I just don't have any room. These are specially made to grow in a tighter space in a smaller area, whether it's a pot on your patio, your balcony, um, whatever you can do, these are set up so that they're just designed for a smaller space. And what a cool thing. Again, yeah. they've really thought this through. They, they're, they know their audience, they know, and, and their goal is the same as ours, is to help people grow and to become more resilient. So these, like this is a Space Master cucumber. So this cucumber plant doesn't grow as large. Um, and any of these that are in here, I could grow in my indoor garden. So if any of you have seen my indoor garden, that's a lot of fun. But sometimes it's really hard to know which varieties you can do in there. So yeah, John's super excited yeah, about the I got excited kit. on that one. I'm super excited about this one. Um, but one of the things that I'd like to show you about this kit, and okay, you can go anywhere you want to get your seeds. I'm not saying this is the only place to get seeds. I have a lot of seeds from a lot of different places. But if you are starting out or you just want an economical way to get started on your Victory Garden, this totally is an option that you might want to explore. Um, in this packet or in this kit, they have all kinds of wow. um, flower seeds and you would be surprised you know, most, most um, survival kits don't include the flower seeds, but we want to attract the insectaries, the, uh, the beneficial insects, right? And the pollinary or the pollinators, because that's going to help the production of your garden. A lot of these are also medicinal um, that you can use for your teas and things. They have these four different varieties of heirloom tomatoes and they've thought Actually, this- five. Oh, five, five, yeah. I lied, I can't count. Um, but they've thought this through really well because they've got this really fun mix packet. So you only need to have like one plant, one of each of these varieties. So in this heirloom rainbow mix, you've got a huge variety. And then they've got the others that are just good basic tomatoes. With the sunflowers, he has three different sunflower seeds. Now sunflowers are really important because they can provide some of the flat fat and the protein that you can't get um, in other ways when you're just planting your garden. So I am like, oh, oh I should tell the melons. They have several different kinds of watermelons. They have um, honeydew and um, cantaloupes. <laughs> And they have a whole bunch of herbs because think about this, if you are trying to survive on just what you can grow, herbs make all the difference in the way that your foods taste. And most of the herbs are also beneficials and they will attract the beneficial insects that will make your garden healthier and happier. And they provide nutrition too, some yeah. great nutrition. Yeah, absolutely they do. So um, if you are interested in any of this, when we talk to these guys, they agreed to give you a 10% discount if you use the promo code Provident Prepper. And so that would help get started. That makes these kits a lot less expensive. Well, you know, and, and just help you get started because we want to see everybody growing, right? Sharing their seeds and sharing their wisdom. One of the things that I love about the seed packets is it, I love the pictures, right? I just think it's, it's really pretty to see what it is that you're gonna be growing. But on the other side, they talk about specifically what this variety is um, and, and kind of give you an overview of it. Then they've got really clear instructions on how to plant it and how to be successful. And then at the bottom of each packet, they sh tell you how to save the seeds. So you've got a lot of education going on with these seed packets. And that's another reason why I think that they're really well thought through. For our challenge, I have some plants that I've already started. Like for instance, these are some of my onion starts that are just coming up now. And um, this is thousand head kale that I'm going to transplant and plant into all the little containers. And so we have some things that I've already started that will be in addition to this. 
And we have our fruit trees and our berry bushes and all of the perennials that we've already got growing out in our yard that can make all the difference. So I would really strongly recommend too that if you have the opportunity to buy any perennials, which are plants that grow back year after year after year, like fruit trees or berry bushes, um, they are a wonderful addition to what you can produce and they're very dependable. So right now is the time to get growing. Go to your nursery, um, get whatever seeds you want to get. If you want to use survival garden seeds as your source, I think they're a great source. I think they've thought this through well. And the 10% discount, if you use the promo code Provident Prepper, will help that out. So let's get moving. And remember, send us your videos or your photos, your great ideas. We really want to make this a community effort. Our World War III Victory Garden Challenge is for all of us as a community. Imagine the power that we have in our community to feed so many people healthy, wonderful foods and to create food security in a time when looking on the head of us, it, it looks a little bit scary. But when you're able to have control over your own food, there is so much peace that comes with that. So what is your plan to take care of your family? And will you join us in our challenge? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Give us some comments below. And thanks for being part of the solution.